Hello everyone and welcome to another draft of Kamigawa Neo Dynasty and this one is a traditional draft so best of three with sideboards involved and uh, Biting Palm Ninja is just a very easy first pick um, I mean the, the worst it can be is a 3 mana 3-3 three, three with Menace which is already quite good actually you would be happy to play that uh, that kind of a card in limited now this has also ninja too. Uh, it costs the same amount of your, as your um, casting cost, so you don't always do the ninja too, but it's a nice option to have available. But of course the important part about this thing is that when it deals combat damage to a player, you just you know trade the menace for uh, an actual permanent discard or in this case an exile effect from hand. So um, that's amazing, amazing value. It's easy to pick here and no, no one for one removal or anything like that comes even close so I'll take the ninja here and hope that black will be sufficiently open ah interesting I actually passed the white shrine a white shrine there so now the question is should I actually go for the Goshintai and hope to find another shrine later in the draft that will uh, you know ideally be in the color that's gonna be my second color of the deck uh, the thing about this black shrine is that it is just about okay by itself. A 4 mana 2 2 death toucher is you know 1 mana 2 expensive for what your death toucher uh, creatures usually should cast. A 2 2 for 3 death touch is like acceptable. But this has the ability to, to just alone kill one toughness creatures and there are those in this format in form of tokens and also the, just some x1s are available in the format. So I think uh, I might take the Goshen type because looking at this pack there's nothing like too amazing here. Uh, what I'm taking like an era of enlightenment, it's it's a good saga, but it's not like amazing. Uh, this is a fairly weak pack, in fact. So I do I do like the Koshintai here. I could take something like a fade into antiquity, it's a totally main deck of green card, but I, I take the black card because my first pick was also black. Okay, another quite weak pack, in fact. Uh, the March of the Swirling Mist is something you could play. It's not a totally, you know useless card because most often you can use this just to save your own creature uh, from death usually uh, in response to opponent's removal removal spells uh, because you can do that for two mana uh, and sometimes this has the secondary mode of just you know phasing out the opponent's team if you do it on their turn before they attack you can even also prevent them from attacking and prevent them from blocking but you can also do it just on, on your own turn uh, exile uh, sorry phase out everything the opponent has uh, that you know allows you to attack unblocked and then ideally uh, win the game that way uh, but it's not like a super good card i, I do like the moon snare specialist quite a bit more um could be blue black ninjas here and um it's just a solid card i think it is it is quite nice i do like the prodigy's prototype this is one of the better vehicles but since it's not black and it's two different colors than i have you know it's it's blue white and I have two black cards so it's not really that interesting to to pick that card there uh, this blue ninja is totally fine here um and now I have to make a decision about well maybe not I could take the ninja's kunai the thing about the futurist operative is that I'm not actually that convinced that this card is really good it is a four mana three four so that's something it's a stat line that's usually like acceptable but when you attack with this, it becomes 1-1, one, one, so easy to remove, unless you actually pay 2, uh, sorry, 3 mana to untap it. Now, yeah, it's unblockable, but it's also not something you want to ninja to, because it's a 4 mana creature you have to recast. It's actually quite bad tempo-wise to use this for ability, unblockability for ninja to. I might still take it. I think the rabbit battery is the best card in the pack. So it's kind of between those two, and actually... I'm so unimpressed by the operative that I'll just take the rabbit battery. It is the best card. If red will be open, I can be red here. Although not now, I don't see any red card here. Uh, so the Gucci silence are probably uh, good enough here. I don't think the, the card reads. I think a little bit better than it actually is. First of all, you have to have something in your hand that you are happy to discard, um, which you sometimes do, but sometimes not. The problem with this card is that uh, if you can't, you know combine it with any ninja to stuff or anything like that it's just a two mana two one that's all it is it doesn't even have a relevant type not an artifact or an enchantment for the cards that care about that kind of a synergy so it's not so great but i think it's here the easy pick because this is a fairly big pack i like the green uh, two drop but um there's no reason to go green here right now all right so there's there's a mobilizer mech which 
I would actually want to play the kind of vehicle deck at some point, but this is mo this is going to be better in green blue where you actually can have, for example, those three three defenders for two that I just passed a couple of in this in this draft already. Um, the crew three, even though this is pretty cheap, you know, two mana for uh, three four flyer. Uh, uh, would be great if it had like a crew 2, but with crew 3 that's a little bit harsh requirement uh, So I'm not taking it here, and I don't I don't take another dog which is silencer either I will take the increase infiltrator which will be the better ninja if I am even in the ninjas now because I might not be Imperial Oath is quite good um, But I'll take the infiltrator now. I, I mean this one blue card doesn't make me Draft blue black quite yet but this is this is fine uh, because sorry uh, this thing is fine because I have already two black ninjas I might want to ninja two although this biting palm ninja is a totally acceptable play just on turn three without any ninjas anyway here I'll take the grave lighter it has been very good for me and I think there's no reason to move to another color so it seems like the pack one will mostly be uh, our, you know black cards and then I will choose my second color in pack two here. The Blade Pleasure is like okay-ish, but I have one artifact, one enchantment now. Um, don't like the awareness. I don't think the disruption protocol is that good either. Better of memory can be okay if you care about the enchantments. This is fine, but not not amazing. I think I'll take the jungle hollow because this is the... Uh, even though there is a, a couple of green cards, but if I'm going to be black green, I'm, I'm happy to have the land here. Alright, so here... Hmm, Wow, that's just not exciting stuff. The Harmonious Emergence is the most interesting card here, I think. I might take it here. Short Circuit, not great. Artificer, definitely not great unless you have a lot of fairly high cost artifacts in the deck. Boon of Poseidon is a decent trick, but I'd rather take this if I want to have a green card in here. Alright, so another Moonsner Specialist. What what did I pick, by the way, over this? This, is, this was my pick too, so I took the Hound. Ah, I took the Ghost Inside and picked two, didn't I? Yes, I did. So this was in the same pack. Huh. I'm almost taking the Fade into Antiquity now that I took the Green Black Land and the Emergence, but I could still be Ninja, so this is actually quite a desirable card in the uh, Ninja deck, so I'll take that. And Search Salt Companion, this is, you know, perfect with Ninja too. Alright, suddenly, I in the pa in end of the pack one, it seems like Blue Black could be the thing. Um, I'll take the show down here. This is a best of three draft. Sometimes you could maybe sideboard this in if you see some expensive bomb from the opponent, but that's rather unlikely. This is fine. But still, I mean, the pack didn't really have anything else. All right, so let's see what pack two gives me. There's a Takami War. All right, so now this is the kind of uh, awkward situation where I could want to take a Mythic Rare, but this time I'm not doing that. Uh, Okipa Reconner Raid. Might just be the black common. Um, there are some very good removal, like the Twisted Embrace. I might take it. I mean, maybe too old, old school to pass up such quality removal, but this is just. I mean, this could just be the best, best black common, and also amazing with ninjas. So, I take the Reconer Raid. Of course, I'm not gonna play this card. The only reason to pick this card is that I still miss two from the full uh, playset of all mythics. Uh, but I'm not. I don't have all the other mythics at four copies. But I mean. To get one of these mythics would would help me get there to complete the mythic set, mythic rarities of this set. But um, this time I'm gonna pass it because there's such a high quality uh, card for my deck. I would pick this over some mediocre playables, but not over an Okiba Reconer raid, which is just just amazing. All right, so I could ah, there's a Kami of Transience, but I don't have more than three enchantments. That said, if I would be black green, it would be fairly easy to find more enchantments. Um, and it is an option here. It's definitely an option here. Heiko Yamazaki is very good, but um, not with my current artifact count, and I have only one red card, although it is quite good. Now, actually, the question here is that do I want to just take yet another Moonsnare Specialist, or take this and just go black green? I think I'll take the Specialist, though. Yeah, I think I take it. It's kind of tough, but I, I think it's more fun to do, <laughs> actually take it here. And I have some, I, I did take the, you know, the um, Increase Infiltrator and the Searchlight Companion, and now the Okiba Reconner Raid, which helped me uh, use this Ninja to act uh, ability. So I'll take the Specialist and uh, 
hopefully I don't have to regret it that you know I'm not getting past at least anything too amazing green here so that would be awkward passing up the green two drop that I could have picked and now if I got another amazing green card here but that's despite there being four green cards here that's not really a problem here and I can take now another Doguchi silencer actually uh, I, I would like to have one you are already dead in my decks too but I think the Doguchi silence that now that I have actually some ways to enable it. For example, the search that company you can just you know discard it. So you need you to out the silence that you can discard the companion rather than replay it and then get rid of the opponent's biggest threat. So that sounds actually totally reasonable. And here I think I'll just continue with the ninjas here. Uh, a couple of decent white cards here. I really like those. Nice red card. Um, Come here for the Shadows probably will be a playable card in this deck, given that I already have, what, 7 ninjas? No rogues though, but still, uh, I'll take the 4 drop ninja. Uh, now that I have some ways to enable the ninja to, definitely I need more ways to, you know, enable the ninja to actually, the, the Increase Infiltrator would want to have some friends. Alright. Wow. Hmm. So, Virus Beetle or Dokuchi Silencer number 3? I think it has to be the virus beetle. It gives you value. It's amazing if you get to ninja to it, and it's not like always the opponent has, you know, a blocker. They are, pl they might play a uh, saga, which doesn't give an immediate creature. Then you attack with this ninja too, and that's, it's really annoying for them if they have to end up discarding two cards to this thing. I, I think because I already have two of these, I'd rather just take the virus beetle here. It's it's really decent. I don't usually like ravenous <laughs> ratsy. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, I'm just laughing because there's yet another silencer. This is an uncommon, by the way, so I could have already four of these. All right, so I don't like usually these ravenous rats effects. It's the original life card with this mana cost and effect um, in limited, uh, but this is too much, you know, good for synergy, so I'll take it. And I actually think uh, I will take the Moon Circuit Hacker over the Dokuchi Silencer. There is definitely diminishing returns for these cards. It is, in the end, 2 mana 2 one that doesn't even always have a target available, whereas this thing, drawing a card is always great. You don't need anything else. Alright, and here uh, Mukotai Ambusher is still the card that took over the Restless Shadow. I don't really need any 5 drops in my ninja deck, it's actually quite mana intensive, you have to recast your uh, cards quite a bit. But I could play one off in this deck because it's gonna be a 2 for 1 always. But yeah, I'll take the uh, lifelinker here. Oh, another Moon Circle Checker. I would really like to have more mana fixing, but yeah, there's no way I can pass this card. Now what I need are the 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyers from blue, or something that allows me to, you know, actually, actually, um, <laughs> enable Ninja to a little bit easier, because now I don't have too many enablers for that. I'll take the Kami of Terrible Secrets. I could play it, although, uh, well, this is a little bit, uh, this lies a bit, because it, my more four mana ninjas are there. It's something I could play if I have more, maybe a few more enchantments and artifacts in the deck. All right, so Kaida's Pursuit is not the worst when I have quite a few ninjas with interesting, um, well, not maybe too many ninjas. These are these don't actually have the deal stipends to play the ability. It's a different kind. So I'm thinking about the Scrounger. Ah, uh, okay, maybe the Scrounger is better as a, just a defensive card while my ninjas try to do some tricks. All right, so nothing here. Wait a minute. This was the, this were this was all the green cards I saw this pack. No one took any of this green. I guess none of them is particularly exciting though. Okay, here's the restless shadow. Yeah, my deck does have. Okay, I got that. Funny. Do I get another one too? No, I didn't get another Dokuchi silencer here. But well, I get three of them now. All right, so th that's really uh, you know ridiculous that my deck has only th five blue cards on, uh, currently. So. I don't really know what's, but they are but they are they are really good so I don't wanna kind of you know not play them either. Club steel curin. Ah, this is interesting. This could be really annoying sometimes to face without having removal, and opponent having the ability to reconfigure. But I haven't actually faced this card yet in this limited format, and I haven't played it myself either. Um, it's not gonna be the peak here, of course. Um, the Arm God Familiar could be a pick. I don't think I care about that card really that much. I just want to have creatures. Patchwork Automaton. Yeah, not not enough artifacts for that. I'll just take the random tutor, which has, you know, a nice reconfigure ability, although it is rather expensive. Come on, some evasive creatures. Yes, increase in... Oh. 
I didn't see this yet. Okay, so first of all, I wouldn't take the lethal exploit over the increase infiltrator or, or over the occupy reckoner rate, which will be my pick here. Uh, but I would take it over the Dokuchi Shadow Walker. I don't need anything that is expensive now, I just need cheap stuff. And yes, this is a little bit easier in enabling your ninjas, but this is just so much better card still than the infiltrator that I'm gonna take this. So blue is not open in either direction, but uh, I guess I'll still play my blue ninjas. Alright, so Cyber Trespassers is interesting, but so uh, so is the UR already dead. I actually passed a couple of those earlier in, in a some pack, in some pack, but uh, I didn't get them back. Yeah, the Trespassers is something I would be playing maybe, because uh, mostly because of the channel ability. It's also a rogue, so you can channel this, then use the Restless Shadows to bring it back. That's actually quite quite nice little piece of synergy, but I'll take that you are already dead, because opponent wants to block my creatures already, so it's quite easy to, you know, cast this in. Alright, so here the pick actually is going to be the Puzzle Maker, another flyer that allows me ninja -ching. Uh, yeah, I don't need the expensive ninja or the blade blizzard. It's gonna be like okay in this deck, but I'd rather take the evasive creatures. And the yeah, two of these might be playable in this deck, but I'd rather take the uh, actual creature here. Okay, grave lighter versus a lethal exploit. Huh. I have a very you know low amount of any kind of interaction, so I might take it. But then again, this is quite good. It's it's pretty good. Also, it enables ninja to ninja to. Alright, fine, let's take the Grave Lighter. Okay, Moon Circuit Hacker versus Clothing Tome. It's actually kind of tough because I would like to have both. Plus, Suit Up is a good card in this deck too. I think I still take the Hacker, but um, it's not easy. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's quite nice. I really wish I had those one mana. I really wish I had those one mana, you know, uh, blue artifact creatures that fly. That would be perfect in here. Do I need yet another expensive ninja? Which, I mean, it's cheap to ninjutsu. But I'm actually thinking about the circuit mender here. This is nice, but... Ah, oh, man, that's actually tough. Because circuit mender is also very sweet if you get to use it as a ninjutsu. I've, I'm gonna do it. It's also very decent uh, defensively. Alright, so here... Could have a sideboard malfunction, but you know most of my creatures died to it, so no thanks. As guys, we make koi is okay, but uh, I have enough playables here. I, I don't. I just take the thing that actually improves my mana base quite a nice, quite nicely. This is these ones that uh, both tap for both of your colors are so sweet. I also don't have you know more than two one drops here, so I don't really. The fact it can enter tapped on turn one isn't gonna punish me. All right, so mnemonic sphere. Yeah, I don't think I need the Blade Pleasure here. It will actually have Death Touch and Menace with some regularity, but it's just a kind of card I don't necessarily need here. I'll take this Sphere. I'm not sure if I'm gonna play it, but it's something I can sideboard in. Alright, I got this Increase Infiltrator back. This was what I wanted. So from this pack, I got both the Infiltrator and the Reconner Rate. That, that's all I could have hoped for. That's fantastic. And here, I can still take the Trespassers. Now, of course, I will have to cut a... A lot of the cards, so oh, what's here the deal? The Nesumi Blade Blesser, Death Touch Blocker can be useful. Also the big guy, the guy, well, maybe in some matchups I just want to have the 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, it was a, I, mean, I don't know. Okay, I got the Clothing Tomat, I'm gonna main deck that for sure. Mm, yep, so I think that's 10 cards, it seems like the deck will be a 17 land deck. And um, well, at least for 9 cards for sure. Okay, Reckoner Bargain no longer is needed in the deck. And I think the Mnemonic Sphere is mostly like a, just a, maybe a sideboard card if, if there's some very grindy stuff going on. Um, Scrounger, not sure about that. I will play the Mender over the Scrounger. I think from the main deck I can cut the Scrounger. And looking at my four drops, I could take the Terrible Secrets out. Now, with the amount of enchantments and artifacts I currently have, it sometimes will be doing the card draw part. But then again, I have to cut so many things. I don't really want to lose any of my synergy here. I think, oh, the Arm God Familiar can go away. I have enough two mana plays here. This is not even an evasive creature. That's an easy cut. Uh, but yeah, I take the terrible secrets away. And this is gonna be my sideboard card. Sometimes I might want to have a you know Death Toucher to block some big ground guys. Or opponent might have one toughness creatures, making this quite good. So but it is gonna be a sideboard card. And now 
I would think I will cut one of the shadow walkers from the main deck. Hopefully it will be a 4 mana thing. And then I have to decide what are the two next cuts. And then I have to decide if I'm going to play 17 or 16 lands. I actually think that Dokuchi Silent isn't just that great, and I, given that I haven't had two mana plays available, I can cut one of them. I, I guess I could even cut two, but I will keep one, uh, two in the main deck for now. That's something I could be cutting then uh, after sideboarding. So I will maybe get the Cyber Trespassers out of the main deck as well. Only seven blue cards here, but so be it. Mm. So the coming of Restless Shadows. It is interesting. Um, it will pick up a creature, so rogues and ninjas. I have 13 ninjas. <laughs> no rogues. So actually this is 20 creatures. Well, the, I didn't pick the interaction. Uh, there was the minus two, minus two uh, spell, for example. I have, of course, interaction in the form of the Gucci silencers. You are already dead. And the moon specialists. And then I just uh, have to add the Grave Lighters can make me, you know, kill opponent's creatures. Clawing Torment. Yeah, should I be playing 16 lands in here? These can draw some cards or loot some cards sometimes. I And these can be ninja to the, So this can be a 2 mana ninja to This can be a 3 mana ninja to this is always at least 4 mana. This is always 5 mana. I think, and this could be drawing me a card in a pinch. So, I should be fairly okay, in a, in a fairly okay shape with just having 3 lands out. And with 4, I'm, I can even hard cast most of my stuff, except for these two th things. I'm really thinking just playing here. 16 lands. Not sure that's right, but I don't actually just want to cut anything here. I want to have every, everything here in the deck. Yeah, one Shadow Walker in the main deck seems like okay, and this being able to always get me a card back is just uh, also it can include the very good rare ninja here. So I think I'll, I'll play 16 lands fine. Uh, hopefully that's not gonna be punishing too much. I, at least I got this dismal backwater to help with my colors a little bit. Uh, I still need a healthy amount of blue thanks to this uh, moon circuit hackers. I won't be needing to turn these things out on turn two ever. I have no way to actually play a one mana creature. So this will be at earliest on turn three, but it is still fine because you could have a, a curving like increase infiltrator into attacking with it on turn three. Ninja to this for one and then recast the infiltrator using three mana that way is totally acceptable. Um, but anyway, I do need the blue for this thing. And sometimes I might have to just play it on turn two if that's the only two drop available. Uh, so seven, eight basics is one option. That would be eight, nine for black and eight for blue still. Hmm. Yeah, it's a bit tough actually. I would like to just run seven, sorry, a six islands. Because the amount of blue cards in the deck is quite quite low. So let's do it like this. Six islands, because I need in every starting hand, I need black mana. There's no way I can keep hands without swamps. But I could see keeping hands that don't have islands, because I could just have, you know, a lot of these 15 black cards in there as spells and not having any, any of those blue cards. So... This is what I do. That's gonna be nine swamp. So this is gonna be like ten ways to get black mana, and still seven ways to get uh, blue mana. I think that's okay. So this is the main deck. Okay, that's actually a fine hand. Oh, even better now that I have the Moon Circuit Hacker with the Infiltrator, potentially. Also, I might be wanting to do this on turn. Uh, 
Okay, so now a change of plans. Um, I think I'm going to play just the, the Gucci Silencer here. But, uh, because if they attack with this thing into it... Although, I mean, I don't care about them gaining two life, but it's, it's like going to matter a bit. I will have to raise the opponent anyway. Okay, I'm gonna do this because I wanna trade this. And if they don't attack... Uh, I might play this on turn 3 and sacrifice my silence, forcing them to, you know, sacrifice whatever they have. Maybe this Lich Gauntlet or whatever they play. Okay, that's totally fine. And now... Uh, Blade pleasure now. Now this but this does mean I don't get to use my mana optimally here, definitely. Because I'm not gonna play this, we would be forced to sacrifice our both creatures. I don't want to do that. So I could actually I want to draw a card from this so I could hacker, so I'm going to take the three mana now. It's also possible they have an enchantment coming up, in which case I couldn't even block here. Now I can also hard cast this if I really need to to bounce whatever they have. But ideally next turn it involves me playing them. You know, need to tune out the Moon Circuit Hacker for the card draw, and then potentially playing the Gravy Lighter to sacrifice the Hacker and make them sacrifice whatever. But of course... Okay, they have that, so... Um, that's, that's not the worst, actually. That's not the worst at all. Um, well, that's slightly interesting. I would now want to do the Reckoner Raid and play something else, but I'm still gonna just hard cast bounce that guy. Mostly because if they're going to uh, recast this thing, they have to either block it or allow me to you know, get super nice value from Ninjutsu. And if they cast some big thing, I'll play my Gravy Lighter, they sacrifice the big thing and I sacrifice my specialist. So that's actually going to be most likely a good turn for me, no matter what. They tap two mana, green and black. Hmm. Wonder what that means. They haven't played anything yet. Do I have to pause the recording? They actually went to the tank or just randomly disconnected. Okay, I'll pause the recording for now. And immediately they untapped. Alright, so... No, no spells have been cast yet. Tap and untap. So they are thinking about... They have some, some complicated... Decision there involving what to do this turn. Well, this is. They have one time out, so when this runs out, they can still. Okay, that's okay. And then, assuming they are gonna play the 3 2 now, maybe. Then I'm happy if they block, even happier if they don't block. So. Yep, totally fine. It is a death that's sorry, menace now because if they have the enchantment there. So let's just um, attack. And they don't want any ninjas to do things. And then I can play... Oh, Grave Lighter draws me now a card. Yeah, this is the other mode of this card. So now a creature has died this turn. This is why they, this is so good with ninjas. If they block and trade with your attacker, uh, you don't get the ninjutsu, but you get to draw a card from this thing. I mean, if you have the ninjutsu available. So here I can just play this to draw a card and then play the Recona Raid. Oh, that's gonna be sweet too. I can even hard cast that if they really, you know, if they decline all my ninja to attacks, I can just play this a 6 mana 5-5. Five five. Not the best use for 6 mana, but given the board state, 5-5 uh, five five can be quite relevant here. Virus Beetle, well, okay, I won't be hard, hard casting it anymore, unless I draw another land. And I'm of course still going to ninja to something out if they don't have a, something for the Grave Lighter. They have only two cards left. Well, my draw will either be a land or it can be a sp it will be a spell I can cast. Uh, that said, it can be oh, that's good value for them. It can be also the one tapped land I have in my deck, but it wasn't that. So they uh, they use the soul transfer, which you know they had an artifact and an enchantment. They could use both. They exalt my creature and return this thing back to their hand. Good for them, definitely. Uh, because 
um, because uh, not all I drew a card from my thing, they get two for one, so I guess it's even in that sense, and now I can do this. Uh, they don't, they have a death toucher here, though it will trade with the Nezumi Blade Pleasure. So I guess my dig. Well, yeah, they have two cards I don't know about. Is my Moon so good hacker and whatever I drew next turn better? Well, at least one of them was a land. So now if I get something for the Virus Beetle. Oh, well, that's gonna be sweet. Let's first make them discard. It could be just a land, but of course this is now the place where I should actually use this before they get to use the final card. It was just a land, all right. So, this will simply trade with the Blade Pleasure. What happens then? Is there a reason for me to offer the trade? It is somewhat awkward if they... Huh. I'm not playing the Moon Circuit Hacker, by the way. I do want to draw the card from it. So I will I will wait. Plus it's very bad against the 1-1 one, one Virus Beetle. Uh, the thing is that my deck has not really a lot of interaction. I can't just randomly draw a kill spell on this. Whereas they can draw a kill spell on here. So I think I'm gonna just do it like this. Trade them off, and you know, we are you know, very, very much of a top deck mode here. I sadly only got a land from that discard effect, but um, let's see now what we draw. Oh, I'm taking this. I hope they don't get through. If they drew a ninja of their own, it's annoying, but they didn't. Is it a creature that can double block? Then it's not. Okay, so this is good. This is very good, and this is also really good. So, am I going to offer the trade with the virus beetle here? Yes, I am. Because it can block the Moon Circuit Hacker. Of course, if they don't block here, that would be fantastic. I can just return the Virus, virus Beetle, but now I will draw a card. And get a couple of regular rates in. Unless I draw something expensive. Yes, take action. And then, uh, well, that's, that's about as perfect as it can be. <laughs> Of course, if they draw anything that is a big creature, then I don't have any attacks, so it can be a bit awkward. That's not a big creature, though. I get to loot now if I draw like a useless land here. Mm, this can attack as a 2-2. Two, two. It only gets the third counter end, end of turn. And this would be sweet if I drew a ninja, if I could use the circuit mender here. But I have a couple of 2 2s, many guys coming up, so I do feel like actually doing this, this attack with both. Okay, so this is really good now. Yeah, the Grave Lighter is such, such an amazing card. So I'm gonna sacrifice the circuit mender, and they have to sacrifice the Nezumi Road Captain, of course. But I will have a flyer from now. And uh, I do uh, sacrifice the Mender because it draws me a card. Not because it's the worst card, of course it's better creature stat-wise here. Okay, Mukotai Ambusher with the Grave Lighter. Now we are talking. And if they choose to attack with this, I'm not blocking. They might choose to. Okay, well, they have more Virus Beetles, sadly. Alright, well, I still have a 2-2 Flyer. Versus whatever they are holding. Too bad this fire speed was also very good against the Moon Circuit Hacker. And that said... Um, yeah, let's just make the disc guy, you know... This is basically now I'm, I'm gonna deal 3 damage a turn. They can attack for it, of course, each turn, and I'm not going to block it. Hoping they don't have ninjas, but at least if they have ninjas, they have to reset the counter. So there's that. Iron Apprentice. Not really concerned. They have an interesting deck. I guess they have a, like... Because of the salt transfer, they have a, just a bunch of enchantments and artifacts that they can, can enable this mode. So they attack. Why wouldn't they attack with the Ghost in Tai here? They don't want to steal it, offer me the chance to block it, right? Because of course it can't block. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I need to. Why would I block here? 
That makes no sense. They can double block one of these road captains, I don't mind. The Gosin I won't block, that's what they does, what the thing does. So if I attack with everything, they will trade with the Moon Circuit hacker. But then both of these go through, they go down to five, then down to four. I think I like that a lot more. I mean not they did they do have a good counterattack. Let's say they do uh, block with the Iron Apprentice on the Moon Circuit hacker. A counter gets moved to probably then Road Captain. They can attack for six, they can attack for seven. But they are losing to my counter-attack. So I'm going to, you know, do this. I'm assuming they just blocked the hacker here. Because they would have to double, double block a menace guy here. Because if they, unless they draw something amazing, they can't just attack with this because I have a lethal. Two of these guys will be lethal and then this flies and these, ha these have a menace. So how can they attack with uh, with more than like the Ghost in Tai here? They chose to give it the counter, that's interesting actually. That is really interesting. It has trample though, jump blocking it won't be that easy, but I think they can attack only with the Ghost in Tai. And even then they need something else than a random creature. They need something very good here. If it involves gaining life, that's of course good. Okay, well, my hand is pretty tight with this hand. I can't really just sit around. I have to attack here. And this is a lethal attack, unless they have something. That's it. Okay, so a green black deck that has, for example, virus beetles, actually two of them. So that's annoying, I have to save my land in my hand. Uh, and then Iron Apprentice, multiple Reconnor Raids, all this stuff. So I did actually, uh, looking at their deck, where are the green cards? I saw four forests, <laughs> one in graveyard, three in on the battlefield, but this is just mono black, right? Okay, there's a goes inside. So mostly black so far. So the Kosintai is is usually good against green because of course it can block all the big things that green decks can throw at you, but I just didn't see any green other than the other than the shrine of course. Alright. I think my two ones are just really bad now. The Moon Circuit Hacker at least has a the looting because these are this against the virus beetle is super super weak. Anything that one has one toughness is so bad against the virus beetle. I think both the Dokuchi silences go away. These I like because they can just, you know, draw me cards at least. And then that is still oh, it's that's an artifact. No, that's that doesn't even have the relevant creature type. So uh, I mean a uh, card type, it does have a creature as its type, but it doesn't, it's not an enchantment or an artifact. Now I have only 5 plus 6, so I don't really think I can play the Kami of Terrible Secrets, just a 3-4. Oh. Maybe I like the Trespassers here a little bit more, and uh, should I have like a random 5-5? Five, five? Mnemonic Sphere, actually this is this against the discard is not so bad. Still have like 19 creatures, I think I'll take, take the Mnemonic Sphere. It's it's so it's good to refill against you know for virus beetle. Sure, the undercity scrounger wouldn't be that bad, but I think I'll do it like this for now. I have the option to recite board if I if it goes to game three. Now that's no excuse to sideboard badly for game two, but uh, I think I like the sideboarding I did there. Okay, well this is fantastic. They let me go first. Oh, they, 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 you know why? Because they have the beetles. The, the beetles are better when the opponent is, you know, having a lower amount of cards in their hand. And of course, my my um, when you are on the play, you will have less cards in your hand. All right, I do need actually a third land for this hand to do anything. At least I have an easy discard. I think it's gonna be just the moon specialist. I don't think I need two of them. One is enough. I like to have the restless shadow for value. Okay, this is actually awkward now. I thought I was gonna get them. 
search the companion down because that would have been really nice. But at least I got my one mana, one turn one place now on the battlefield. More beetles, yeah, they really go. I mean, they could have like a five beetles in the deck. It seems like that. Uh, Cyber trespasses. Even though it's good with the restless shadow, I don't uh, benefit much from the tap ability right now. Okay, finally. Um, them trading with both of those. I think that's fine. I do this just to scare them. Plus, if they do double block, I still won't be double. I mean, I could use the specialist here to bounce a virus beetle, but I don't want to discard anything. This is a fine trade. Plus, I, I'm much more happier to, you know, I'm much happier to, you know, bounce something that is, you know, more expensive than that, for instance. And now we'll get a little bit of value from the searchlight companion. And yeah, the Restless Shadow can still pick up the Trespassers because it is a rogue. Now, of course, this can pick up any creature. I, I talked about this card as if the second ability didn't, second mode didn't exist, but it's a really bad mode. I mean, you don't want to pay five mana for a three three that doesn't even net you a card. Uh, maybe if you have like a huge density of bomb rare creatures in your deck, you could be interested in running this just for the second mode. But mostly, treat this card as something that returns a ninja or rogue from your graveyard to your hand. If your deck can't do that, then don't play this. Okay, how many more beetles do I need to face here? At least now it wasn't wasn't a beetle. So this is now great. Um, I'll just use the moon snare, moon snare specialist to bounce the searchlight company, uh, return the searchlight company. Uh, I might re uh, return the increase infiltrator if I had an extra land, but I don't, so it makes no sense. I get the. I mean, this costs one mana more, but it also gives me a one one blocker, which is actually quite useful because. It can double block the plate pleasure, even you know when it has menace. Um, I could consider not playing the island uh, because they might have more of these beetles coming up. But then again, I can just discard the search out company, and I want to have it hit my fifth land drop for the Kami of Restless Shadows. So far, they are already down to thirteen, given what I had in the you know, beginning of the game. You got Rainy into a what? So the specialist can't attack anymore. This will be a 3-3 when it blocks. Mm -hmm. Well, they might have a land drop into this blade pleasure. If they don't have a land drop, that could mean they have a, a master's rebuke to kill my, I don't know, infiltrator. Okay, just a dog which is silencer, which you know is really bad now because obviously I have blockers for it. Glowing torment is good. I kind of want to use it actually right away. The specialist will just trade with the silencer, but I can just attack with. Yeah, I'm gonna do it like this: clubbing torment on here, forcing you know more trades there, and then uh, I get to attack for what three here, uh, two basically because they will trade with the specialist, and then uh, the third one will be the life loss they have, and then I can just play my you know the one one flyer also can start being relevant. So they have one creature that cannot block. Uh, this is actually good if they have their own ninjas, I'm not gonna block that, so they can return it and get ninja value, but I think at least I forced them to use their ninja for that, something like that. I wasn't gonna block the Yukai Trainee anyway, That's this at least allowed me to do an attack and force them to block with the silencer, just in case. Well, I don't think they were, you know, uh, well with the one one blocking, so they, the silencer wasn't gonna do anything in there anyway. But it was optimal use of mana. Let's say I draw a land, I will definitely play the Kami of Restless Shadows. And then if I didn't play the Clothing Torment on the previous turn, I wouldn't, you know, be able to play it now either. No ninjas there, so that's really really harmless card right now. I didn't see, you know, a lot of ninjas in the previous game, so that's that's what the, that's why I wasn't too concerned. Alright, so this will be a 2-2 blocking my ground, guys. That'll be just, uh, I mean, I have this one once <laughs> now able to do things. Alright, so now because I can recast this for two mana, this ninjutsu is two, I won't be returning the search side companion, but this is totally fine. I get to gain life. This is actually gonna deal also three instead of one that's relevant here. So, two blockers. Why does it? Oh, because it asks to go to blockers because of the infiltrator's activated ability. Alright. This sounds nice. So they go down to 6. 
then they go down to five and I have two flyers this can actually you know deal three uh, sorry two in the no no three in the air plus this is four in the air and this makes them lose one life so I could have just a lethal well not a lethal attack but a lethal turn cycle ending to their upkeep if the current board states you know remains and it's not like they can pressure me in any way here I'm at 24 and have even blockers for their guys. By the way, they didn't... Uh, which, why is this not a... Well, I wasn't gonna attack with these one ones because of the 3-2 here. Okay, they have a soul transfer, which has only one mode, fine. Uh, so the thing is that they didn't give this a counter... F did they not have one? Oh, they, did they use their... Yeah, they had five mana, they played two mana card and a three mana card, all right. And they have a life gain removal spell. Well, but now their hand is empty. But they can attack for... Uh, well, they can't even attack with the Blade Blesser here. Cause, uh, but they offer me this trade. I can take it. Wow. So, Grave Lighter. Oh, I'm definitely not doing this, you know, without the creature having died. Because, well, you know, they will sacrifice this and that's bad for multiple reasons. And I can just attack with this, so uh, they will block and my creature will die and then I will draw a card. And have a 2-2 two, two flyer. So the Grave Lighter is just, the more I play with it, the, the better it seems. Okay, there's my first pick in the draft. Don't, doesn't seem like I need it. They are out of resources, they need to draw something amazing in order to have a chance here. And I still get a nice refill here. Okay, they can sacrifice that for two that for two lands. That was good draw. I mean that is one of the ways they can you know start the game to, to you know to get back to the game. So Biting Bomb Ninja. I think I'm going to use it. But I'm not sure which I'm gonna return. I kinda don't want to lose my two two flyer. Companion it is. This is just too good. Although with minis it's good too, but I wanna... They just drew two fresh cards. I want to, you know, make them lose the cards they have. Uh, one of them, that is. Oh, and they just... Uh, of course, they also took two extra damage there, so making this creep lighter. Just lethal on the next turn. They didn't want to go through with that. Maybe they drew like one land and one, one spell. I'm able to make them exile now. Okay, well that was a clean 2-0. Hmm, Alright, a tough one. Because I don't have the blue, but I have the great turn 1 blade and then a good turn 3 blade in which I can use this. I assuming I drew any land. I think it's a keep because if I draw one land, even if it's just a swamp, I'm gonna be able to play stuff, play this, play this, and so on. Because this 2-2 two, two will be around when I can cast this, so I can make, you know, the edict mode. Alright, that's annoying to see. But that's at least a good draw there, but... Yeah, you don't want to see a turn 1 generous visitor ever, unless they, and they, they even have it. Okay, but at least that's not a creature, so they have to sacrifice the visitor now. So the visitor will trade with the 2-2, two, two. unless they have a 1 mana creature here. Okay, I was scared for a bit. They played 2 spells, but neither of them was a creature. Okay, so now, this is okay. Let's sacrifice some creatures before this gets out of hand. And then I need to... I can still do the ambusher thing on the next turn, but I need to... I would rather just get the moon circuit hacker if I, that's definitely the case here. Mm-hmm. Guess I get to do at least something here. Okay, so now this will most likely trade with the 3-3 Azusa thing. Uh, a likeness of the Seeker. Yeah, untap up to three lands. I'm not going to block that thing. 
Well, I'm definitely not gonna block it now, but do they must have it to creature here now, yeah. Oh, but do they? I even drew another grave lighter. So if they don't have a creature, this is horrible for them. Ah, oh, this trade is totally fine. Okay, grave lighter. And I haven't really drawn that blue, but it's not like I haven't needed it. Another blue, black, uh, sorry, black green, by the way. Interesting. Okay, well, I can keep doing this thing. <laughs> um, yep. Let's have an infiltrator, so I might want to actually do this so the Gucci Silas, I think, because I have a creatures I can discard, because I can't even cast them. So this can, you know, just ninja to out the silencer here. Yeah, that would be pretty fantastic if they have some big creature, like a, well, I don't know. They haven't really played a lot of stuff. They even drew a card from the wisdom, but no. So what the... Are they gonna just take here? Hmm. The thing is, I don't want to play that, but of course I can't play this post combat if neither, neither of these die. I would just have to sacrifice a creature. But I kind of don't want to do the Dokuchi Silencer a bit post combat either. It's just, you know, at most trades with the 2 2. With, oh, I'm gonna just pump this. Hopefully, they don't have any kill spell here. Because they might, and then I don't. Because if they have a kill spell, then, you know, the Grave Lighter would have actually drawn me a card. But it doesn't seem like they have a kill spell. They have something else in their deck. In their hand. Okay, Roaring Earth giving a 5 5. So hold that second, just bounce if I just ever. If I can just ever draw the blue mana. Of course, I can just kill it as well. Okay, well, now that starts to be... Well, I have the means to deal with all that if I just draw a blue land. Blue producing land. There it is. Fantastic. So now that this is my land number five. Um, I can't still card cast a specialist. I have to ninja too, but I can ninja to that and this. No, let's, let's, let's play it smart now, shall we? No, I would need six mana to play it very, very well. So uh, I'm able to uh, bounce back to Grave Lighter and... No, 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 actually I was wrong. I don't need this actually this turn, although it's quite sweet against the forest here. But I can bounce it on the next turn, because what I can do here is... Do I have to bounce it on the next turn? Okay, this is actually difficult now. I have multiple things I can do with it. One is just to, you know, cast the... Moonsna specialist like that without even worrying about anything else. No, I have another grave lighter in my hand though. Oh, that's the best. That's the best. Okay, so I think I yeah, I don't have to bounce this. Yeah, this now this took a lot of time, but now this is what I'm gonna do. So the Gucci silencer returning into in Christ infiltrator. Oops. Yeah, because I because I have the another grave lighter. Yeah, that's this is gonna be great. So I'm gonna deal four to them, and then I'm going to just say that uh, I will discard one of the moons moon circuit hackers, and I will kill the forest. Then I will say that uh, oh, that's actually yeah. Now that I kill the thing, this actually draws me a card. It doesn't make us sacrifice. I was actually thinking that I can sacrifice the silencer and they have to sacrifice this. But actually this, you know, this, uh, this is totally fine too. Because now that this is a land, I can next turn return a Grave Lighter and use the Moonsnare Specialist. Okay, Wisdom, I'm taking some damage here, but uh, they can, they actually need a blocker for the silencer. Unless they have a kill spell on it. Yeah, but they also can't really take just yeah, all this. Maybe they have a creature now. Okay, they don't. But anyway, this is gonna be quite. Uh... Oh, this has vigilance. Oh, because this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, it has vigilance. I knew it. I knew it. So. I think that makes it rather easy then. Just play this. You know, I don't have to ninja to anything. Bounce this thing. Play the Infiltrator. I don't know why did I play the Infiltrator right now, but... I mean, they are down to 3. They can attack with... They can attack with the 5-5 five, five Hasty Guy, which I can choose to jump block. 
but can they they can give it actually plus five plus five with the boon of Poseidon, the uncommon trick. So I should cut uh, block this just to be sure. It has vigilance though, so this attack is totally free for them. But I would just lose the boon of Poseidon, whereas the Gravelighter will win. And I should actually and then the, I need the flyers. The flyers are more important here. So the, um, my flyers are representing lethal, even if they get the drain one from the Reconner raid here. They need to deal with two of these flyers. Dealing with just one is not enough. Okay. So multiple history and wisdoms. The visitor. Annoying. Roaring Earth. Something to keep in mind. They can have a surprise blocker. Mm. Didn't see a lot of black this time other than the Reconner raid here. They have this big thing, which kind of makes me want to play another copy of a Dokuchi Silencer, perhaps. Or maybe this... Oh, did I even think about this card, by the way, in the previous match? The opponent had quite a few one toughness creatures, including the Beatles here. Why did I sideboard this in? I think this was a proper sideboard card in the, in the previous match. But, well... I didn't, and I still won, but uh, I think I should have done that. Uh, in this case, I don't see one toughness creature other than this, but it easily picks up a counter. So it's mostly like useful against these big, big things. They can, you know, enhance their guys. Plus two, plus one doesn't really... The one toughness doesn't make it... The one extra point of toughness doesn't make it too hard to still trade with them fair and square, but... Uh, I might be interested in the Ghost in Tide still. But then again, it is a 4 mana play, and... Uh, what I'm gonna not play here. Uh. <sighs> yeah, I don't think I can play it. The Restless Shadows can be maybe a bit too slow though. A 3-3 three, three is also bad stat line against the green deck that can have, you know, when they have access to 5 mana, their creatures will be a lot bigger than mine. So I'm gonna cut the Restless Shadow here. And I will play... It would be interesting to play even another copy of Dokuchi's Silencer, but... What this deck really needs is a little bit more ways to, you know, enable ninjutsu. Couple of infiltrators is good, couple of reconnect rage is good, but I would want to have something more. Even just another Swordslight companion. But now I have to make up my decision. I think it's going to be the Dokuchis. Uh, maybe, no, no, it's going to be the Trespassers. Yeah, let's cut the silencer and done. I have <laughs> five seconds. Why do I have to always use the almost all the time? Well, I guess I don't do it always, but too often. Alright, so I, I didn't put the third Dokuchi Silencer, but I did put them Trespassers so I can, you know, tap down their stuff. This is fine. No ninjas, but both colors. I have a virus beetle that, you know, can a little bit tax their hand a little bit. And um, then I have the circuit vendor, and both of these will be nice if I ever get to ninja to something out. Trainee. Mm. Okay, well, I'm gonna try the ninja to thing, so, although against the, but I can put a clogging torment on it. Anyway, virus beetle now, let's make them discard. If it's a land or a spell, okay, land. So my plan next turn is just the clogging torment, but yeah, they will have two blockers, they're quite likely to play another blocker, so maybe this is not gonna work the, well, the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Uh, but Grave Lighter, wow, that's, that card is just so good. So, so far this doesn't have menace. So I have to sacrifice my virus beetle, no big deal. They have to sacrifice... Probably... I don't know actually, the Yukai trainee maybe? Um, well, now I could also just play the circuit mender. That, that seems like it's actually something I want to do. Because then I have good blocks on these guys. Now, this has menace, but I can double block the... 3, 2, yeah, let's actually do that instead, because I want to, I want to try to maybe stabilize a bit, I don't, I'm not going to block with a Grave Lighter, so I would still take a lot of damage there, if I played it, I would have to take 5 here, when they sacrifice one of those, so I can double block that thing too, I will lose the Circuit Mender, but it's fine, if they have a trick, I will still draw a card from the Circuit Mender, and I will have the Virus Beetle now around, which is relevant, because, you know, Grave Lighter, wow, um, now I can do... I won't be playing the Cloving Torment quite yet, because 
I want to use the second gravy lighter too. So let's just do this. You mind who which they sacrifice. And yeah, if I use the glowing tomato on this, I kind of can't use this valuably anymore. They can just sacrifice that. I don't want that to happen. So I will take the three damage from that guy. From that guy. Next turn I can have a moon circuit hacker. Tales of Master says, let's let's make it. No, let's make it now. Now this will be sacrificed. I'm just thinking about I will be using moon circuit. Four plus. Because what I could do, I could just play the moon circuit hacker and the second grave lighter and make this, you know, go away. I sacrificed it. But I want to have my card here. I want to have my card here, so let's do it like this. Now they are gonna miss out on the second counter there, and I still have, you know, I can I must take the five damage there. The hasty five. Okay, that's fine. They're getting some life, but uh, it's just a three three in the end, and that, that at least doesn't have haste. All right, so I could draw another card here, but I don't actually want to draw another card right now. The thing is that I don't want them to know that I have another grave light happening. On the other hand, what would, what would be my turn like if I... It's not like they can prevent this creature from entering the battlefield. It will enter. So if I if I ninja to this, I have a six lands. I, I, I will have five lands remaining. I can't cast this because then I just sacrifice a creature. That's not great. I'm gonna play this and then I have two other mana available. Or I can just play the searchlight companion and that's it. And have several different decisions for the next turn. I like that actually a, l a slight bit more. There's no rush using the circuit hacker here. This is also not an optimal use of mana, but I want to have the ninja two abilities here available for both of these ninjas, and, and I can't just cast this because you know it doesn't do anything good for me. Now, am I gonna jump block the five five? That's a question. They played their land. No, because I'm gonna sacrifice this, you know, for the Grave Lighter, most likely. Let's see if they have another creature. It doesn't matter actually if they do, because I have two ways to kill it, and now I can use the better one. Yeah, this Grave Lighter is just so insane. Now they will take... Yeah, look at this value I'm generating here. This is just... this is just amazing. I still have the Dokuji Silencer here. Yeah, that's how... Um, I mean, they're basically out of... Almost out of resources. They get the 3-3 three, three now. And they have two cards in their hand. But I have these, this board here. I have this stuff here. Generous Visitor. Then how about an enchantment? History and Wisdom. They will draw a card from that too. Let's see if it's, an, if it's another spell. It is, but just a 3-1, which I can actually, you know, kill with the clone torment. So let's now do... I even have the U already dead, so it, this is just a matter of deciding which of my tools I want to use this turn. I think the Glowing Tomat will simply kill the Densome Prowler. I don't need the life drain effect here that much, life loss effect, because I'm, I'm gonna have a you know, little board of attackers anyway. So one of the... I will discard something for the... I think... I, I kinda don't want to discard the search of the company, but that's the cleanest way to deal with this guy. Unless I just use the U already dead. Let's start with this thing, actually. I'll try to trade on the... on the visitor. If they don't block at all, 
then I can use the Dokuji silencer to, you know, return the hacker and then, you know, well, point of point is that it blocks so I don't have to worry about anything else right now. No, that's totally unnecessary. Let's just deal for here and uh, use this in here. Draw a card. Do this. Do this. And then if I draw something. And I can still, you know, use the search light. I, I can discard the search light company and if I want to use the Doguchi silencer. Because I can use it to ninjutsu this thing out. So it's back to my hand in that case. I'm just, just also you know, winning this. Okay, that's a good one. This has to go before they draw another. Enchantment. So I will discard the companion. Uh, if I return the Gravy Lighter, yeah, the problem is that the Gravy Lighter would be sweet, of course, I would get net cards with it. Um, but the, I, I, I would have to discard it if I want to use the silencer, and I want to use the silencer for sure. So bye bye, companion. They don't want to even play. Understandable. Hmm, yep, that's a nice one. Probably will play the Moon Circuit Jacker on turn 2 if that's the only option. That allows me to do the Grave Lighter on turn 3 so that I can sack this and they sacrifice whatever they have. Also, I can just play the Puzzle Maker. Okay, definitely now that I have two of them. That's gonna give them the 1-1. One, one. No, no, this is yeah, the, yeah no, this is for this was exactly that one. So uh, is that worth? Because if I'm attacking, they're gonna block most likely anyway. Oh, but that's good. Then I draw a card from the grave lighter. Yeah, let's, let's do that. I, mean, I hope them to block now. Oh, they don't want to block. That changes things a bit. They want to have the plus one plus one counter on here for some reason. Huh. I could even draw a card here. That doesn't allow me to play a 3-drop in that case. They want to have the 2-2 two, two creature for some reason. They value it more than my hacker. Is there a good loot? I can. I guess I can loot one for Swamp away. Okay, let's go there. Because I think I wanted to now do that. Oh, now I don't want to loot a Swamp away, but it's still the only card I can really lose here. I'm gonna make play it because for some reason they wanted to have it, so let's do it like this. But I really wanted them to just block there because the outcome would have been totally the same, except that I would have been able to draw a card. I would have missed on the loot, but I mean, that still. Alright, so now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think I'll draw a card and make us sacrifice these things. It's valuable for them, but it's not like I can, you know... The circuit mender is always gonna draw them a card. I, it's not like I can exile it or anything. I need a card here anyway. Plus, this is gonna be a sweet one. But yeah. Oh, actually, with the virus beetle, I should definitely just play this now. I will use the grave lighter with the virus beetle. So now they have this one one here. Um, which, if it gets to attack, it... Um, of course, it, it's, it's an attack trigger, so they always get either one plus one plus one counter or a token there. But ideally, I will have a good block on it. Okay, they can fade that thing away. Okay, bouncy bounce. That is something you don't want to bounce. It leaves the battlefield effect. They would draw a card. So, I didn't draw a land, so I can't go wider speed into Grave Lighter, sadly. Mm. I can't attack, there's no good attack now. So I can just play the Reconnor Raid. I can I can play the Grave Lighter anyway, but they will just um I don't wanna bounce the Kirin touched or Rochi either. That's that's not good. So this is not actually that great. Hmm. 
not that great at all. But yeah, let's make them discard. I, I mean, the bounce is just not good now. I really wanted to have the Grave Lighter <laughs> mana now. Don't, doesn't actually matter which they are gonna discard there. Okay, let's do this. So, uh, they're gonna attack. This is gonna be one. Well, if it's a one one, they can keep it a counter. Then in which case I will use the Moon Circuit uh, Hacker to, to block it. Uh, and uh, of course, otherwise I will block with the Lighter Spill. So let's see if they even care about the attack. Yes, they do. It's actually not so bad block. They get they they can just um okay give a counter to. But they can take a one one token. Doesn't matter. I think they have both options available. But do they want to read? Well, they know about the Grave Lighter in my hand. That makes it, that makes it so that uh, me losing the Lighter Spill isn't actually. Yeah, this is actually them. Now they have a very safe thing to. Sacrifice for the Grave Lighter. This also means that um, I'm not gonna use the Edict effect on the Grave Lighter. I'm going to just uh, just going to you know. Okay, they, so actually this is not so great for them because they can block with the one one, but then my Grave Lighter at least draws me a card. Sadly, I would want to play the Restless Shadow here, but there's nothing to. But there is the Moon Circuit Hacker to bring back. Well. Let's do this and see what they do. It's not the greatest. I feel like I still want to use the Grave Lighter right now. This is, by the way, bounce any creature, including my own. That's good to know. I will be getting the 2 2 there. I'm not really. My life total is okay. They, of course, have some lifelink attacking here going on. So. Come if Restless Shadow is bringing back the Moon Circuit Hacker, but the problem is... Yeah, but I'm not gonna block with the Grave Lighter, fine. Yeah, it's actually quite annoying. So I'll, I'll play this, which I'm gonna easily be able to, you know, block with. Yeah, if they attack with the Aegonju Exen Barrel alone, do I block in that case? Probably not in that case. I will take three from that thing. Yeah. Hopefully they don't have their ninjas, but I guess I'll see right now. They have only two cards in their hand. Hmm. They do. But green doesn't have, you know, more other than this thing. And well, oh, there is the... There's the uncommon and rare one, of course, too. But yeah, the, now that they was able to do that, it's super annoying because I don't want to still bounce it because they get to draw a card and do it all, all again. So that was... Okay, to be fair, that was super annoying. Because I was totally counting on attacking with the Kamius Rest of Shadow. With this being a 2-3, then whatever they do to block. My Grave Lighter gives me value. That's actually insane. That they got the counter on this thing. <sighs> my game plan totally went away. So the point is, this attacks for three. Well, I guess if they play like a big creature, that's also... But no, a big creature I can just bounce. Although that's like a temporary effect. So there's no way I can bounce this. They can... Well, they gain two life again, but they will get the card once, and they will get another card from it when it dies again, or whatever. However they lose. It. So... I think I need the uh, Grave Lighter here just to have a flyer. I will sacrifice my Road Captain. At least they have to now sacrifice a creature of some kind. You know, not a 1 1 token. And then I can use the Grave Lighter, you know, to, you know, generate some nice value. I can just start the drawing card. So as long as they can't deal with this or block this. I'm still in a good okay shape because I, I don't mind if they attack with the circuit mender. If they do attack with the exemplar though, I have to think if yeah I can take three here. Hopefully they don't have another ninja. But this keeps you know the lifelink at bay. That's quite important. Okay, no ninjas this time. Good. And no kill on the grave lighter at least yet. They could have the deal for damage to an attacker thing, which they would have to use in declare attackers okay nothing so card or a life linker i 
think I'm gonna do the card part because then I can use the you know the grave lighter again. This is actually quite a sweet combination. I can yeah the grave lighter having two of them in my deck is just seems like it's the you know the best thing that can happen. Because um I can just you know play this again, sacrifice the hacker. And they have to sacrifice now again something. This time it was the exemplar. They don't want to sacrifice the mender, even though it draws them a card, because that's the one thing that you know keeps my Kami of Restless Shadow at bay. Okay, they are flooding out, that's definitely good for me here. But I can keep doing this. <laughs> Another Grave Lighter. Wow. So how do I do it this turn? I guess I can make them sacrifice it now. So this is now the, the, the place where I should first deal 2 damage and then use the Ninjutsu. So let's deal damage first. And now, because this is doesn't care about any damage triggers, so I can do this now. And I think it's time to just bounce the naturalist here, so they will have to sacrifice now the, this thing and then uh, this thing makes it so that uh, don't have to worry about this. Now they get to draw their card, but at least the 3-4 is out of the battlefield now. That, that card draw was going to happen sooner or later anyway. And my hand is still very good. And now they have the 3-3 three, three, this. Okay, double striker. They can now uh, Oh, uh, well. I think it's rather easy now that I do the land. Bounce this. And let's sacrifice some creatures. But I still have a ninja to cut to rebuy the Grave Lighter. So this event, if nothing else, has been how how Grave Lighter is synergized with ninja to abilities. You get so many li and I have two of these in my deck, which helps a lot. But uh, oh, this is just it then. That's lethal attack. Open, given that they, oh, actually, I could have done three in them, but whatever, they're gonna lose now anyway. Um, how how. Uh, when you draw one Grave Lighter and you have a Ninja to abilities, you can just, you know, get this Ender the Battlefield ability again and again. And both modes can be very good. You can just draw a card, which is uh, fantastic. And then the Edict effect can be also quite nice. Alright, so this is a green-white. So I had a green-black, green-black, and now a green-white, which uh, does, <coughs> does actually splash for something black, because this Scoured Barons probably is not in the deck just to gain one life. Entering tapped is not worth it. At least not when, when the format doesn't have any life gain payoffs. Right, so... Oh, oh, oh. There's a one toughness creature, there's a... There are some one toughness creatures now, not not like a, too many of them, but I could see playing the uh, Ghost in Tai now. And maybe the Restless Shadow is... It's still quite... I mean, in a very grindy matchup, maybe yeah, but I don't like it too much now here. Anything else? Terrible secrets. Mm -hmm. No, I just like my... I like this too much. I'll just keep it. Okay, and it you know doesn't hurt that I have had these decent starting hands in this event. My opponent actually mulligans here. To five. Oh, okay. Now if I draw one of my beetles that make them discard, that would be so horrible for them. Okay, they kept five. 
So I have here two, three, four start. But most likely involving some ninja too. Calling stalker, which I will basically have to block. Well, I don't have to, but I will. I don't want to make them give them free counters first. Okay, they, they do a splash for black and they drew mulligan to five, and now they have three different basic lands on turn three. So if they kill this, they get a counter. Guess I can leave with that. Fine, that's a trade I don't mind making. I have the puzzle maker here. It will be okay. They, that's a good uh, card to sideboard against the ninja decks, and I just drew the perfect thing that can you know get rid of this. They will block this one for, and you are already dead. Will kill that thing, and draw me a card. Yeah. And there's a cradle. Oh come on, that's gonna draw me a card. Jeez. So anything but the land is, yeah, well, that's gonna be a good one if if we have learned something in this event. Gravelighter is insane. And now this, note the Gravelighter doesn't do the edict effect, but actually I'm rather... I could have actually bounced this, but I didn't want to. I can take, you know, if I did the, you know, this, this thing, you know, after damage, I could have done it. Bounce this. Anyway. Let's just draw a card, because that's the mode when something has died. And I will take two when they get two, it's no big deal. I will have the Moonsnare Specialist to block this thing in future. Might even hard cast it. Depends really what they do. Okay, they get to land. Are they gonna make this into a 3-3? If they're gonna make that into a 3-3, well I'm gonna still just bounce it, right? They didn't make it into a 3-3, so they have two mana up. Are they offering the trade? I'm not blocking. I'm not blocking if they are offering the trade. The lifelink is not that scary. Uh, a ninja would be, but... Black ninja, green ninja, I'm not worried about that either. Okay, so... No reason to... So, okay, one thing is that they could have the trick that gives, you know plus three, plus three, and reach. But in that case, I use the Boon's Specialist before damage is gonna get dealt, so... Attack with this. I can take that, it's pretty sweet. I mean, if it's a one mana card, you are happy to play on turn six. That's how powerful this thing is. All right, so any reason to take a tempo hit here? Because I could, I could start gaining life with this thing, it's just not sure. I would have to return a flyer, I don't want to, oh I can recast the flyer, yeah 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 of course, oh, I'm a fool. Ninja I I don't want to recast the Grave Lighter because I'm gonna play it and I don't want to, I don't want to get the Edict Trigger this turn. So I'm gonna do it like this, oh. and then that, and then this, and now next turn I can Bounce this, for example, pre-combat, so they can't trade with it. But of course it depends what they do here on their turn. But I have, as you can see, just about a crazy amount of options here. That fades into antiquity, which is totally acceptable. They're gonna gain two now, be my guest. Alright, so now... I think I'll just hard cast bounce it. It seems like that is the Well maybe first I will see what I draw. Um uh, I mean that's as good as any spell now. They I did see some one toughness creatures. For example the Aganju exemplar. Although they can give it what plus one plus one counter now, but whatever. So just deal the damage here. And just uh, do this do this hard cast. The opponent did mulligan to 5, I didn't do any mulligan, so of course this is now, I mean, I'm by by default I'm assumed to be a, a, at a very great advantage here, and unless they have the white 6 mana rats, I don't think they have that easy way to deal with me. They, they just refuse to use the Echolocist Terrarium here, for some reason. 
Now this is a block I'm willing to take. Now I could also, you know, use the specialist here to bounce this again, but I'd rather then block here and then I get to draw a card from this. And I still have the ninja abilities able to reset these things. Mm, don't need a land. Well, that land wasn't so bad to draw there actually. I could have considered that, but still I didn't want to draw a land there. If I mean I'd rather just draw a spell than a land that allows me to play the Goshinta here. Okay, double striker, which I can just well I can Oh man, this specialist is so insane here. It's ridiculous. But they could still have a land drop into the... They could have a land drop into the, you know, exile everything. What's the, the, the name of the card is Farewell. Yeah, they could have a Farewell. That exiles whatever cards. Well, it doesn't exile Planeswalkers, but most others. Alright, so this is now... There's no fog effect in this format, so let's just finish it up with this thing. I don't think there's any reason to make it last any longer so <laughs> oh man what a crazy game i mean of course opponent mulligan into five so that's it but hey this is again i think it was my second ninja draft in a row uh, using in when you only count traditional drafts and also second 3-0 i get some of my gems back because i have had some bad results in both traditional and and premier drafts so conveniently i have to be elsewhere now so i just in time for the event to end. Um, nothing too much to comment except that Gravy Lighters are amazing. If you have a ninjas to combine them with, it's even better. Amazing card. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching and next video will be a premier draft. Also next video will be my draft number 20, so there will be my set completion update after 20 drafts. And it will be a lot of negative amount of gems because of the bad results I've had, but uh, you will see yeah, at the end of the next video. Thank you for watching and bye bye.